Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to have a look at a little funny phenomenon that is happening on the stock market right now. And that is that of course we all know that the stock market has gone a lot up the last month or two, but the companies that have filed for bankruptcy are also going up. And now we are going to have a look at that because they're not just going up, they're going up way quicker than the overall market. So let's have a look at if bankruptcy is actually the new buy signal. Should we buy into these stocks? And as always, I will give you my opinion at, in the end of the video here. All right, so let's just have a look at some of the headlines here. Even bankrupt stocks soared in the last, uh, uh, in the latest market rally. Uh, retail investors bet on bankrupt US companies rising again, and so on and so forth. And of course, there's a picture of the Hertz logo here because that is one of the uh, most widely held uh, bankrupt stocks or bankrupt companies uh, owned by retail traders. But before we dive further into it, let's just have a quick look at the bankruptcy uh, details from the United States because I must admit I was I'm ab absolutely no expert on this uh, topic, so I had to. Uh, dive into Investopedia here and they are always good for a good explanation. So what we can see is, uh, and that part I knew, is that there are pretty much two different kinds of bankruptcy. There is a chapter 7 and a chapter 11 and then there are some smaller uh, details or sub uh, chapters if you could call it that. A chapter 7 bankruptcy is simply when the company stops. It simply goes out of business. It's no longer there. It just ends. All right. And then there is the chapter 11. Uh, this is the most common type of bankrupt, uh, corporate bankruptcy. Um, in this, uh, in a chapter 11 bankruptcy, a company continues normal day-to-day -day operations while ratifying a plan to reorganize its business. All right. So basically, chapter seven, um, it just goes out of business. You cannot buy stock in stocks in that. But the chapter 11, you can actually still buy stocks in this sort of company because it's still running. Um, the process for chapter 11 here allows, uh, and then there's, there are a lot of, of, of rules here, who is first in line to get money and so forth. And you can see here, the distribution of new shares occurs in the following order. And that means if uh, the company is restructured, uh, then often new shares are being uh, distributed. So first of all, we have the secured creditors. These are the banks that have lent the company money with assets as collateral. So the big money, uh, the, the big banks, the big funds have borrowed some money and they have taken some collateral, making sure that they could, would get their money back or almost sure. So when new shares are being issued, then these secured creditors are the most secure, of course. Then there are some unsecured creditors. These are banks, suppliers, bondholders. If, for instance, a company have issued some corporate bonds and so on, who have supplied the company with money through loans or products, but without collateral. So they are the next in line to get some of these newly issued shares. And then there are the the stockholders, the, the, the previous stockholders. These are shareholders and owners of the company and usually emerge with nothing or next to nothing. So this actually means that if a company files for a chapter 11 bankruptcy and you think, well, this is a good and solid company, it's just because of the virus and the crisis and so on. So they will probably keep running. Yes, they might. But if you are just a normal retail stock holder in this company, you most probably end up with absolutely sip, nothing, nada. All right. Remember that when we go through these uh, stocks just in a second. All right, so let's have a look at some of them. Um, we have some of them here, but companies like Hertz, JCPenney, Pier 1, Whiting uh, Petroleum, Diamond Offshore, uh, they have filed for uh, for Chapter 11. And then there are some uh, companies that might be doing it or that are at least in big trouble. And that is uh, Chesapeake Energy and Looking Coffee that I made a video about. Uh, some while ago where there was some fraud involved. So let's take these companies one by one. Let's have a look at Hertz. <clears throat> we have them here. Let's have a look at the daily charts. That is the most fun to watch here. I don't know the exact date that these companies filed for the, their chapter 11, but let's just have a look 
here from the bottom here on the 26th of May this year and to the top, uh, absolutely top, Hertz went up 1900% in what? Five to eight or 10 days. So it was actually be, it was decimated to be what is called a penny share, a penny stock. And that is um, mostly these companies trading below a dollar. And there are often uh, stocks that are favored by day traders, speculators, and so on. So of course, it would have been nice to sell your house, take the, your entire savings and put into Hertz Global here at 21 cents and then writing it up. And of course, in your wisdom, be able to uh, exit the, the stock here around six dollars. They're, they're down at 283 now and nobody knows what will happen. This is pure speculation. There's nothing in there. And if Hertz uh, live to see another day and can stay in business, well, then you will probably be getting next to nothing. All right, let's take the next one. JC Penny, the good old store company here. Let's just see JC Penny comes here. All right, from the bottom to the top. If you were able to pick that exact top and bottom, almost 500% also in a couple two or three weeks. Do you start to see a pattern here where you could say, well, that would be a nice pop to take just throw in five or $10,000 here and you would be up with $50,000 in a couple of weeks who wouldn't like that. Well, first of all, you have to guess which of these companies are making these pops and you are uh, also, you have to be able to spot the bottom and the top. Uh, some day traders will go down into a smaller time frame and look at, for instance, the one hour chart and time it out of that. Enter up here when it goes above, it's uh, the black line 20 SMA and exit up here somewhere. Uh, so it, it might actually be be possible to make some very decent money if you are a good disciplined day trader in the stock market. But for all of us other mortals, I would recommend that you stay out of stocks like JCPenney, at least for now. Pier 1, let's have a look at that one. Pier 1, here it comes, yeah. All right, it doesn't seem like a lot, but let's just have a percentage gain here. Almost a thousand percent. What's not to like there? It is going from four cents and up to around uh, a half a dollar here. So absolutely also a day trading wild lottery ticket right here. Um, and I'm 100% certain that some of you are making a killing out there in these swings. But what I'm talking to now in this channel is called building freedom, kind of building a good solid financial future that is normally not done in these kind of companies here. All right, let's take the next on the list and that is Whiting Petroleum. Let's see it here. WLL, WLL yes, here it comes. All right, uh, I assume that there's uh, chapter 11 was down here somewhere, not down here. Uh, but if it was in here, you had in a week, you just made a decent 424%. If it was down here, I'm not certain about that, it would have been 1200%. Who wouldn't wait a month and a half extra uh, to gain 1200%? And let's just have a look at the last one, Diamond Offshore. I'm not certain because it's not a company I actually know. We have the, uh, it must be, let's just have a Diamond Offshore. I suppose this is the one. All right, if this is the right one, otherwise you can correct me. I'm not 100% into this company, but in just a couple of weeks, it went up 334%. All right, so I think you get the picture here. In these bankruptcy cases, people go in and I hope people are aware that in these chapter 11 filing bankruptcies, they are most likely getting nothing out of it, or at least next to nothing. But what we see here are speculative bubbles, because people start to see a pattern and they can see, all right, it happened to Hertz. And then they start searching for other companies that have filed for, bankrupt, uh, for bankruptcy, and they start to see this pattern emerge. And this is what is called the greater fool 
uh, a strategy or theory because you're buying a stock that you know is doomed so you are kind of a fool buying it but your plan is to sell it in a short while to a greater fool that will buy it at, a, at an even higher price even though the company is bankrupt so the greater fool theory is in full play here and uh, there are definitely people that have made hundreds of percent here but also remember that most of the traders are the what we call the dumb money and that's not because you're dumb it is because you are less informed than the wise guys and the wise guys are the one taking this jump and then you hear from your neighbor's neighbor's colleague that he made a fortune so you're saying yes of course i'm going in here at 625 and you are writing it down uh, having a loss over a couple of days at 72 percent and you sell it and then it starts going up again and you might even buy it again in the fear of missing out the whole FOMO movement and ladies and gentlemen this is a sucker's game this is simply not the way to invest if you're really really a hardcore day trader this is the stocks of course to go for because you can make hundreds of percents per day but as an investor stay away please stay away from these you're gonna lose your money uh, then of course there is another thing and I would just take that uh, along here as well because in these times where we don't know if bubbles are popping or uh, markets are crashing or whatever uh, people have this fear of missing out and I found an article that I think is kind of related to this and that you might have heard of it about the Fang DB, uh, a Chinese real estate technology company that gained 395% in a mystery move. Uh, let's just have a look at it. Fang DB, uh, they have the ticker code uh, Duo here. Have a look at this. It's almost such a big move that we can't, can't almost see it. 1200% in a day it made. Have a look here. From the 5th of June and up uh, up here somewhere, it made, yeah, above 1200%. And then, of course, it dropped down. Uh, some people said, well, now it dropped down. We are buying the dip, so they bought it up here at 62, and then it dropped down to 10 again. All right. Have we seen this before? Yes, we have. Let me show you an example. All right, here we have the other example. This is an example from uh, 2017 at a point where cryptocurrency and, and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that was really, really hot. And if you were into that, if you know the price development uh, in, in that area, you know that in the end of 2017, that is where Bitcoin and all of this crypto topped, at least for, for that uh, time. And what happened is that um, we there was a, let's just find it here, uh, an iced tea company changing their name to something with blockchain, um, a long blockchain corp here. And you know what happened? Just because that people were searching for everything that had something to do with blockchain, which was a technology that Bitcoin was built on, this company uh, went up almost 400% in a couple of days and people realized it had nothing really to do with blockchain and it dropped down again. It was the same in the tech bubble in 2000-2001 where we saw a water cleaning company in the United States that, uh, uh, that changed their names to something like water technology something. And just the, the fact that there was technology the name in the name the company went up several hundred of percent because people had this fear of missing out so wow a new tech company i want to get in before my neighbor and all just too late they realized it had nothing to do with internet or whatever was hot at that time it was simply technology to clean water and the same thing with this blockchain they had nothing really to do with blockchain it was still uh, it was still just a normal a manufacturing company so it went up and then it went down again and that is exactly the same with the fang dd because this is just a real a chinese real estate tech company but what the theory goes is that people 
thought it had something to do with the Fang stock, you know, Facebook, Amazon, and so on. So they thought that this was maybe a new ETF or at least something that had something to do with the Fang stocks. So just because of the name Fang DD, well, of course, we need to buy it. And the price shot up to, with 400% and then it went straight down as soon as people realized this has nothing to do with Fang stocks. So the reason why I'm mentioning this um, is that right now we are seeing a big tendency for especially retail private traders rushing into these uh, pump and dump hype schemes uh, where they are trying to see what will be the next bankruptcy and then they are pouring in and then of course it is the greater fool who will be the last one to to take their money out uh, they will be the one losing I can just recommend you don't unless you really really know what you're doing and when I'm saying that I'm not talking about that you have invested your inherited money since New Year. No, I'm talking about you being a full-time professional day trader has been that for five or 10 years. You have been around, you know the tricks and you know when to get in and out of this. And if you are that kind of trader, you probably don't have time to watch videos like this. So in theory, you could say, all of you listening and out there, stay away from these bankrupt stocks, stay away from these hype, pump and dump, uh, this is the next 2000% gainer. Try to look for some solid instead, at least if you are new into the game and don't have 10 years of experience. All right, that's all for now. Uh, that was all about the bankruptcy stocks that some people think is the new buy signal just because they're going bankrupt and haven't been able to. Of course, it can be unfortunate, they're going out of business because of the, of the virus, but some of them are simply going out of business because they're poorly led and poorly managed. So people are pouring their money into these stocks that are just about to go under and might reemerge, but without you getting a dime out of it, that is risky business. That is not building freedom. That is not building a good, solid financial future. I recommend you stay away. That's all for now. If you haven't done already, press the subscribe and the like button out there so that YouTube can see that you really like my content. All right. Thanks for now. Take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.